What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the 585 Report. And it's just me uh, for this episode. Ryan's on vacation. He's having a tremendous time from what I can tell on Twitter. So I do miss him, though, but it's going to be three weeks. Just me, no Ryan. Might be having ourselves a guest on next week, so do stay tuned for that. I don't want to give away too much information, but uh, some cool collaboration could be going on. But let's keep it on this week, though. So welcome to this episode of the 585 Report. And just because it's myself, I wanted to talk about something. I wanted to do something to, on the show today that was a little lighter. Um, and something that is a little less, I guess, uh, discussion. And I can kind of just tell you my opinion. And see what you guys think so today we're gonna do a 53 man roster projection now i'll say this i've never done a 53 man roster projection before never i i honestly have never done it before and uh we're just gonna go for it i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna post on my twitter too so for those who are listening if you want to keep track of this uh it will be posted on my twitter by the time this show drops which again is saturdays at noon i think Going into these 53 man roster projections. And I'm not going to tell you quite yet what I said for each position and what players, but the positions I'll just say going into it that I had the hardest time picking were this for me offensive line, defensive end, mainly the numbers. How many of the Bills keeping? Are they keeping 90 linemen? Are they keeping 60 ends? Who are they keeping if that's the case? Every other position, number-wise, I felt pretty good about. But there's no question that for those two positions in particular, the O-line and the defensive ends, I really had to sit there and think about it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As I take a sip of water. All right. So... Starting with the quarterbacks, I think the Bills are keeping two quarterbacks, Josh Allen and Mitch Trubisky. I think that, well, let's be real. I don't need to talk about Josh Allen. I mean, he's the franchise guy. He's proved it last year. He's knocking on the door of being one of the elite of the elite in this league. Potentially a top five quarterback. Okay. Mitch Trubisky. Obviously, the Bills' best quarterback outside of Josh Allen. Although Trubisky struggled as the Bears' starter, as a backup, I think that's about as good as you're going to get in the NFL. But the real discussion, you know, question here is the discussion is about Jake Fromm. And personally, I'm just not a big fan of Jake Fromm as as a NFL quarterback. He had a great career in college. He was, I think, a pretty likable dude until those text messages got uh, posted on Twitter, which kind of hurt his reputation, I think, in the locker room. I know a lot of Bills players responded really negative to, negatively to those uh, to the tweets with his text messages. But if, if Jake Fromm shows anything in this preseason, I think he gets traded. I don't think he's on the team. I just, I just simply don't think he's even on the roster. And... The Bills have, they don't usually keep, I mean, they've been kind of back and forth with keeping three quarterbacks on the roster or not, but it's been usually just because, you know, for certain circumstances, you got a rookie Allen, of course, you're going to have the two vets and Barkley and Anderson. Last year, obviously you had to have the third quarterback and Fromm as that COVID quarterback, just because there was so much uncertainty. But at this point, Allen's your guy. COVID, you know, I think it's going to play a role this season, but not like last season at all. So I'm going Allen Trubisky, two QBs to make the roster. Moving on. For the running backs, I have them keeping four running backs. Obviously, Singletary and Moss aren't going anywhere. I think after today, again, I'm recording this on Thursday night, uh, Brandon Bean made a lot of comments about Taiwan Jones calling him an elite gunner. I think that unless Tywan Jones underperforms substantially here in the preseason and training camp, he's making this roster. He's a veteran. He's still excellent at his job. 
I just think that he still makes his team. And for that fourth running back position, I think it's going to go to Matt Breida. I think it's Matt Breida who's going to win this. And I think this is where the discussion is. The discussion is here, Breida versus Antonio Williams. Now, why did I pick Breida over Antonio Williams? Here's why. I, though I do like Antonio Williams a lot, really, I think he's a. I think he could be a pretty decent running back in the, in the National Football League. I think he's got a chance. I really do. I just think that the Bills, they need, as I've said, they're, 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 the backfield is kind of like a bowl of ice cream, right? How I look at it. And you need each scoop to be a different flavor. I just think Antonio Williams is just too darn similar to Zach Moss. The playing style is just downhill power football. And at the end of the day, the biggest thing that Bills fans, including myself, complained about during the season was that the Bills had no speed out of the backfield. And Matt Breida is... I mean, Madden released it today. He's the second fastest running back in Madden. He has breakaway game-breaking speed. And the Bills lacked that so much last season. And I don't know how big of a role Breed is going to be in this offense because, you know, Brian Dable has always kind of been a two-back guy, right? 2018, it was LaShawn McCoy, Chris Ivory. Uh, 2019, it was Frank Gore. And Devin Singletary last year was Singletary Moss. Now, I would like them to not have Brita inactive every week like DJ Elden and find a role for him. I really would like that. But, you know, we'll see. But I think Brita does make it over Tony Williams. And on top of that, you know, Brita's a vet. And I think it was Singletary has mentioned how Brita's been really great to have in the room. So... And on top of that, I do think Antonio Williams is a guy you could get. I think you can get him on the practice squad. I, I Even though he put some great tape out last year against the Dolphins, I think the likelihood of him really getting scooped up by another team is, is pretty low. So four running backs, Singletary, Moss, Brita. And sorry if my voice is a little raspy. Um, allergies have been acting up a little bit, so I do apologize. And I know those who are probably watching on YouTube see me you take a quick gulp of water. I'm just trying to keep the throat nice and clear for you guys, best I can. Um, so I just wanted to point that out because I'm sure some of you are thinking, you know, what, what's wrong with his voice? Why is he drinking water? Well, you know, my allergies are out to get me. And uh, it's my first time ever having seasonal allergies. So I'm learning as I go here, I guess you could say. Now, moving on to a position that I didn't think I was even going to have to add to this initially. Um, and that's fullback. The Bills have a fullback now, and it's Reggie Gilliam, who they changed his number to 41. And it's interesting they did this because, you know, last season, Reggie was their, you know, although he was listed as a tight end, he kind of was the default fullback, if you will. Now, the Bills did not use a fullback very often in their offense. You know, they're a spread offense, but. Last season, you know, the few times they had a fullback in there, it was Gilliam. I think the fact that they changed his position, and he's the only guy at fullback, I think he now makes his roster. And on top of that, he is a very good special teams player, which gives him value there, which me and Ryan have harped on it. Harped on it, especially the last two episodes. These back half of the roster guys have to play special teams. Have to. You can't have a back half of the roster guy be strictly a position player. They have to be able to contribute on special teams. And Reggie Gilliam is a great special teams player. I mean, Pat DeMarco is just on uh, the Shout podcast with Matt Preen and Ryan Talbot. He talked about how awesome of a special teamer Reggie is. And like I said, the fact that they are they, they made him a fullback, because as a tight end, I don't think Reggie's making this roster. I don't. But they changed his position to a fullback, and there's not a single other fullback on the roster. They brought in no competition for him at fullback. I think this is his. I think they like him as a special teams guy. I think they liked him and what he could do as a fullback. And I think what this does is maybe signal, and this might be an, a, a, a discussion for a later episode. It, I think it's possible the Bills are really trying to emphasize running the football better by committing someone to a fullback rather than just sort of having a 
quote unquote tight end who also needs to run routes down the field and know the playbook from that tight end position. Well, Reggie Gilliam's now a fullback, and his job is just to clear guys out of the way of the run game. So, anyways, Reggie Gilliam at fullback, I think the fact that he is the fullback has guaranteed him a roster spot, just about. Unless, of course, he underperforms. He was a UDFA last year. He's Nothing's guaranteed for Reggie, but point being, they have a fullback. I think he's probably making this roster. To receivers, I have been keeping six wide receivers. Obviously, the four of them are pretty pretty easy to guess. Diggs, Sanders, Beasley, Davis. I mean, these guys are making the roster. They're going to be a big part of what the Bills do in 2021. I mean, I don't I don't think I need to discuss it too much. Now, where, where the depth chart looks after you know going to week one, we'll see. We're probably going to see during that first Bills training camp that's open to fans because obviously the Bills can't hide who the ones and twos are for those. If I had to guess, I think Diggs and Sanders are your two guys outside with Beasley in the slot. I think Gabe Davis is going to stay in that same wide receiver four role, which personally I'm fine with because he excelled in that role. So I think those four, they're locks. They're making this roster. It's no question about it. It's this bottom two that you start to get some conversation. So for me, at the bottom two, I have Isaiah McKenzie and Isaiah Hodgins, the two Isaiahs making the roster. Now, McKenzie has a role in this offense as that gadget guy, that sort of eye candy guy, which I tell people this is why I think Isaiah McKenzie's value is a little bit higher than people think. Yes, as a player getting touches, he didn't get a lot of receptions. I don't. He didn't even have 300 yards receiving last year. A lot of his touches are manufactured. But how many times would you see Brian Dable have Isaiah McKenzie, you know, running back and forth across the formation, right? Just as eye candy for the defense to get them to have to react to that because it's on tape. Hey, this guy gets the ball and he can make big plays happen. So I think McKenzie, you know, has a good chance of making the roster just based off that and his ability. It just as that gadget guy alone tossed to the fact of his return ability. Now Ryan has pointed out and you know, maybe Ryan's listening to this. I know he's a big Marquez Stevenson guy and he's got a good reason because McKenzie before last season, which I will be, I'll be, it was all one punt return. When he was on Denver, he was a terrible returner and his first year in Buffalo was not so good either. He had a couple of fumbles as well. Some muffs. But that being said, though, the Bills' options at returner aren't great, right? It's McKenzie, it's the rookie Stevenson, and it's Brandon Powell. To be honest, I think Brandon Powell has a better chance of winning this job than Marquez Stevenson. But Powell also gives you nothing as a receiver. So this is kind of why I think I looped back to McKenzie. was just, he's the gadget guy, he's the eye candy guy. And I think the Bills really want him and believe in him as a returner. We're going to find out, but I really think that McKenzie is going to be that returner come week one. And then Isaiah Hodgins, you know, who knows who's going to be this last receiver to make the roster. I think it's going to be six. They usually keep six. The Bills do, I think, in all of Sean McDermott's years as the head coach. And I think uh, Hodgins... The reason why I think I have him in over saying the names of like, you know, a, a Tanner Gentry, right? Or someone like that, or Marquez Stevenson, is that Isaiah Hodgins brings this playing style and a skill set that's different from all the Bills receivers. He's tall. He's got great hands. He's awesome in the red zone. You know, and this is a guy that's a good route runner, too. I mean, not fast. Not fast at all, but watch his, you know, watch him tape him in college. His double move is filthy, and he's got a pretty good knowledge of separation, getting open. Now, we're going to see when the pads come on, uh, and he's going to have to be physical because he's not going to run by people. He ran a 4-6, I believe, in the 40. But this is a draft pick from last year that played pretty well in training camp before getting hurt, and we'll see. Now, I do think Isaiah Hodgson's biggest competition is Jake Kumaro who also brings that size 
uh, great special teams player, Kumaro. And obviously in the news recently with Aaron Rodgers talking about how he thought he was the second best receiver that was in training camp for the Packers. So interesting to see there. Touchdown Jesus. Will he be on the Bills roster? It's possible, but for now, I'm going to lean towards Hodgins just because the Bills invested a draft pick in him. I do think they really like him, and so far, in, you know, from spring ball, he played pretty well. Now on to tight ends. I have the Bills keeping three tight ends. Knox and Hollister are locks. Knox is going to be the tight end one. I've officially come to that uh, agreement in my head. I, I thought maybe for a little bit, maybe Hollister could. I don't know. I, th- I, th- I got some wet feet on that, or cold feet, I mean, and I, I'm going to go with um, Dawson Knox. And it's a big year for him. He's got to prove it. He's got to come out and show that he's a better player than what he's been the last two years. But he ended the season on a pretty high note. So I'm a little excited about Dawson Knox. I'm curious to really see, because he's worked hard. You know, he's at tight end U with Travis Kels. Um I've said Kels because that's what he wants, not Kelsey. But I, I know some people might be annoyed from that. But he's at tight end U. Uh, he worked with like a hand eye, like coronation guy uh, for his catching. We'll see. But I know he's had some drops so far to start training camp. So it's a little worrisome. Hollister, I like him. He's a similar player to Knox, but as far as athletically speaking, but he does things a little differently. Uh, he doesn't have the speed down the field as Knox, but he's built similar. He more wins with quickness. He's he's a better he's a better route runner than Dawson Knox. He doesn't have the explosive athleticism that Knox has, but he's quick. He's really quick. Um and they're both about the same as far as blockers go, which is like, you know, average to above average. They're not the best run blockers. Um but they can get the job done. And I wouldn't mind seeing the Bills, you know, play a little, you know, Run a little bit more 12 personnel. Um, I'm not saying that Knox and Hollister are going to light the thing, they you don't know, light the league up, but Hollister is a legit receiver. Knox can be too. Um, and the Bills don't have Lee Smith. They don't have a blocking only tight end. So I wouldn't mind them having two tight ends out there that can run some routes, catch the ball, make some plays. I think that would just give them uh, some more flexibility. My final tight end I have making this roster is Tommy Sweeney. And I thought Tommy Sweeney's a rookie. Looks pretty darn good in limited action. He played well in the preseason. Played really well in that, I believe it's a Week 17 game against the Jets in 2019. I like Tommy Sweeney a lot. And he's a great blocker. Great blocker. What is the biggest thing about him coming on the draft? Excellent blocker. Obviously, he had a tough 2020. Um, had a hard condition from COVID. Uh, as a complication of having the coronavirus. so uh, But he's back. He's healthy. And so far, he's been good in training camp. He's looked well. He's playing hard. Um, I, I I think, you know, he's got a chance to potentially be a piece of this offense, maybe. I'm really high on Tommy Sweeney. I really like the guy for some reason. Um, but for now, I think he does make this roster. Without getting into too much about depth chart and whatnot, I'm just trying to focus on uh, 53-man roster projections. I think he does make it. So, Knox, Hollister, Sweeney, those are my tight ends, the three of them. Now we get to the old line, and this is where I started having some real conversation about who is making this team. The starters are the starters, right? Dawkins, Ford, Morse, Feliciano, Dare Williams. Those five are making this roster. That's your week one starters. Unless there's injury during the preseason, during training camp, those are your starters. Ryan Bates is also making this roster. They used him as the extra offensive lineman last year. He could play all five positions. His versatility is great. They love him. He is not going anywhere. Spencer Brown is not going anywhere either. That's a third-round pick. Just, there's no way the Bills are cutting a third-round pick. I think he's probably your swing tackle this year. Maybe essentially replaces Lee Smith, because athletically, he's pretty dang gifted. We'll see, but for me, Spencer Brown is making this roster. I have Ike Bucker making the roster. It was between him and Forrest Lamp. My reason for keeping Ike Bucker is that he's been in the system now for several years. The coaches have likes him. They've coached him in a little bit at center, I believe, so he does have some versatility. I know he can play both guard spots. And honestly, I know that last year, his first start against the Jets was a little shaky. 
But by the end of the year, Ike Bucker was a solid O lineman. I'm not going to sit here and say that the guy was outstanding because he wasn't, but he was rock solid. And having that as a backup, dude who had seven starts last year and played pretty darn well, I would say, all in all, I think he just makes it over Forrest Lamp, who I know a lot of Bills fans are excited about him maybe making it, you know, being a starter over Cody Ford. But honestly, guys, I, I, I just am not that high in Forrest Lamp. I just, I don't know, man. He he's only played one 16 game season last year, which was or which was last season in his career, and you know he was average. He was decent. I think Cody Ford has a better chance of being really good than Forrest Lamp personally at this point. And then we get to the end here, the online. line, and this is where I had a back and forth, and it was about Tommy Doyle. I don't know if the Bills are going to keep him or not. And I might be cheating by saying this. I, I know I'm going to make a decision. I don't think the Bills, I think the Bills do not keep Tommy Doyle on the 53 man roster. I don't. I know they don't want to give up on draft picks, but the O line was so strong. And I think you could get Tommy Doyle on your practice squad. He's a fifth round pick. He has some like limitations physically. He's not the smoothest moving guy. It's not like Spencer Brown, who's a big, who's, you know, project that you can really shape up into some elite talent. I think Tommy Doyle has a chance to be a decent, a a good player in this league, uh, but he's not necessarily special like Spencer Brown. So I'm going to say, you know what? Eight, eight O lineman, no Tommy Doyle. I had him kind of uh, marked on my list. I have like an asterisk next to his name because I was between him and another guy and I I made an executive decision. I'm going to explain why, uh, but no Tommy Doyle. Uh, That's final. So going to the DNs, and this is where the Tommy Doyle thing comes in. I have them keeping six defensive ends. Hughes and Addison are making this roster. Epinesa, Rousseau, and Basham are also making this roster. I mean, you need your veteran presence for those three young guys, and I'm excited for AJ Epinesa in year two. I think he can have a really nice year for this defense and, and be a, a, a real nice player for him. I am... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I think that AJ Epinesa, I'm I'm really curious to see how he's going to be in the run game. I think he could be an awesome run defender in 2021. And if he and Basham can really set that edge, it would just be huge. But yeah, Epinesa, Rousseau, and Basham are making this team. Now, for the sixth defensive end, I have them keeping F.A. Obata. And that's what it came down to for me. Was it Tommy Doyle or F.A. Obata? And the reason why I picked Obata was that the Bills have proven this offseason that they need to get better at rushing the passer with just four up front. And Obata was a damn good player last year. I mean, nothing crazy, of course. Five sacks, but... This is a guy who got pressures on the quarterback. He was good against the run. They lined him up <laughs> inside. <coughs> Excuse me. They lined him up inside on passing downs, and he was very good there. And I just think that if if this is a guy, okay, that can help you get to the quarterback, because at the end of the bay, day, The Bills need to bring down Pat Mahomes, right? When it comes down to it in the AFC Championship game, right? The Bills need to get to Mahomes more. And if this is a guy that can help you achieve that goal in 2021, I just don't think you can cut him. Because Tommy Doyle, listen, Tommy Doyle is not going to see a snap of football, I think, in 2021. And honestly, what I could see happening with Tommy Doyle, and and I've mentioned this to to a, a few times on the podcast, that Brandon Bean has found a little cheat code with injury reserve. It seems like every year, one of the Bills' late-round rookies who, you know, has a long shot to make the roster, but is a guy they like, happens to just get hurt, you know, in preseason, makes the 53-man initially, but gets put on IR right away for the Bills to then sign another player. I think Tommy Doyle is a prime candidate to be that player. Prime candidate. I think he needs a year to just learn, 
and work, you know, learn from these veterans, see how it's done. And I think that if that happens, it opens the door for FA Bata. So 60 ends keeping, and I'm keeping a Bata over Tommy Doyle. D tackles. This one, I also had a, a, a little back and forth about who I wanted here. But I have Ed Oliver, who obviously this is the ninth overall pick from two years ago, three years ago now at this point. Dude's got to step up. Star, who I'm very interested to be able to see about Star Latule. What, what a storyline that's going to be here in training camp. Is Star Latule going to be the guy that we thought he was back in 2019? Is, is he still that player, right? Or is he going to, you know, digress? show some age. He has not played football in over a year at this point. Almost two years now. How is he going to be? We'll find out. But I am I am intrigued by Star, though, and I actually do think that Star will have, will, will have a big impact on this defense. Harry Phillips, who I'm really excited about Harrison Phillips, guys. Really excited about Harrison Phillips. I really think that he could have a big year this season. He's in a contract here too, so he needs to perform well. Uh, whether he signs with Buffalo or not, who who knows? But I'm really curious to see how Harrison Phillips is going to play this season. I'm very interested. And then it comes down to the end here, the D tackles, and it's between, for me, Vernon Butler and Justin Zimmer. And for me, that put me in a dilemma of do I listen to my heart or my head? And I went with my head by picking Vernon Butler. I think that Vernon Butler is a guy that McDermott and Eric Washington like a lot. They paid him. He did take a pay cut, which I think means that his roster spot is by no means guaranteed. But his contract is now, it's not so easy to move off of. And I think unless he performs horribly or Justin Zimmer comes in and is a man on a mission, I think that they are just going to have to keep Vernon Butler over Justin Zimmer. It pains me to say that. I love Justin Zimmer. I will stand up for him, you know, all off season if I have to. I really like that kill that guy a lot. But I just I just don't see it. I just don't I just don't I just don't think the Bills are gonna pick him over Vernon Butler. So those are my four T tackles. Linebackers. I have them going with six linebackers. So Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, and AJ Klein, Tyler Matikavich. To me, these four are locks. I mean, Edmonds and uh and um and Milano got I mean pretty much both got paid this offseason. I mean, Milano got that big extension, which I was very happy about. Because I think Matt Milano is a huge piece of this defense and their success. Edmonds got his fifth year option picked up, which is the organization backing their young player up. AJ Klein, although struggled last year, dude ended on a tear. I mean, he went on a tear on the midway through the season and at the end of the day, led the team in sacks with five. So can't really get rid of your sack leader, I suppose. And then Medikavich, he's just a stud special teams guy. Um, and the Bills, they, they always seem to have a few guys who are just strictly special teams, just a few, about three or four. It's more than most teams, to be honest. Um, but Matikavich is one of those guys. Now, I do have them keeping six linebackers just because I think special teams-wise and depth-wise, I mean, the Bills had so many injuries at linebacker. Why mess around? Have depth for yourself. So I have them keeping both Tyrells and Adams and Dotson. Starting with Dotson, I think Dotson, you know, had his moments uh, in 2020. Had made some good plays in that Miami game. He was a constant guy on their special teams the whole season. And a guy they really like. And super versatile, too. Could play all three positions at linebacker. Will, Mike, Sam. So, I think the Bills like him. And they, and they, they he, I mean, I, I've said this since they had him. As, as an undrafted rookie, he had that allegation, I believe, was a domestic violence dispute. And the Bills stuck by him. I think that just, and, and, you know, which is un Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean like. And I think that kind of tells you what they think of him as a football player. And Tyrell Adams, 
I think they need to keep Tyrell Adams because I think Tyrell Adams is going to have to be their kind of primary backup. I mean, this is a guy that played a lot for the Houston Texans, was a solid player, got a lot of tackles, very good special teams guy. And I, I watched a mic-up video of him, and he just feels like a McDermott guy. I mean, he just plays with tremendous effort and hustle every single play. Uh, just plays every snap like it, will, it could be his last. And that, I think, embodies this McDermott process. So uh, I really like Tyrell Adams. I, I think that I don't think he's going to win a starting job or anything. Uh, but if he had to come play for a Matt Milano or an A.J. Klein or even a even a Tremaine Edmonds, I, I would feel pretty comfortable with him that he can get the job done. All right, cornerbacks. So I'm just going to get all, I mean, five of these guys are locks. All right, and I have them keeping six. Trey White, Levi Wallace, Taron Johnson, Saran Neal, Dane Jackson. They're all making this roster. They are making the roster. I don't think I need to get into much explanation, but real quick, Trey White's a shutdown corner. Elite. Okay. Levi Wallace has been a solid veteran. Average CB2. I'm, I, he doesn't concern me. I'd like to see an upgrade at CB2, but Levi Wallace isn't losing you games. Okay. He won't be the, re, you know, he, he'll he give up some plays, but he's never going to lose you a game. Right. Taron Johnson, who did get benched last year, which I think people forget. He was horrible. Awful the beginning of the season, but turned around and, and made the two biggest plays of the year for the Bills. Uh, those two pick sixes were just, you know, huge. And then Saran Neal, who, you know, got some got some uh, attention uh, from the from some Bills players uh, during the press conferences. You know, they, they a couple guys mentioned that Saran Neal is, I believe it's Michael Hyde and Jordan Poyer. I mean, they said Saran Neal is one of the freakiest athletes they've ever played with. I mean, the dude's a top-notch gunner. Um, if not for Matthew Slater, he could arguably be the best gunner in football behind Matthew Slater. He's that good. But I have them keeping six corners just because I think you need depth at cornerback, especially quality depth in a league that's getting more and more spread when it comes to offenses, more receivers to cover. So I thought about this one, and I went with Rashad Wild Goose. He's a draft pick, and I mentioned that very rarely do you see McDermott give up on draft picks. Um, so I think that, you know, he's a guy they're going to want. He's got big time athletic ability, which is not the case in that quarterback room. It's a lot of guys who aren't the best athletes uh, that are very sound and smart football players. Wild Goose is athletic, but he needs some, um, you know, ref- he needs to kind of learn the, the ins and outs of the game a little bit more. But he's got ability. He's got explosiveness. I think he'll be probably inactive every week, but I do think that Rashad Wild Goose, when, all, when it's all said and done, makes his roster and could be a gunner potentially. Like if he might find a way, you know, potentially there, especially if the Bills want to move want to move on from a Taiwan Jones. I mean, Wild Goose could be that guy. So again, six corners: Trey White, Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, Saran Neal, Taron Johnson, Rashad Wild Goose making this team. Now to safety. Poyer and Hyde, I mean, they've been a, a, a dynamic safety duo now for, what is it coming up on now, five seasons? I mean, they have been top notch. Simply uh, top five tandem league. I don't need to go on much more than that. I think DeMar Hamlin is definitely making this team. Again, it's a draft pick. I think he fits in that Dean Marlowe role pretty well. Special teams guy come in on certain packages, kind of be that big nickel. Um, I think that, you know, that's where DeMar Hamlin likely projects on this roster. And lastly, Jaquan Johnson. He's been here for three years. Uh, Don't know much about Jaquan Johnson outside of the special teams play, which has been pretty good. Um, But he's, he is a guy I think they trust. He's been here now for three seasons. Uh, I think that like, I'm a big Tariq Thompson fan. I thought about maybe putting him in there, but the bills are going to trust a, third-year veteran who they drafted over a UDFA, I I think, at the end of the day. I think Tariq Thompson, to me, will probably be a practice squad guy. And I'll go into the special teams, and there's no competition here. No backup kickers, no backup punters, no backup line stoppers. Your kicker's Tyler Bass. Your your punter is Matt Hawk. Your long stopper's Reed Ferguson. And that's that. 
So I'm going to quickly go over the list just real quick, just to remind everyone. So quarterbacks, I had them keeping two, Allen and Trubisky. Running backs, I had them keeping four, Singletary, Moss, Breida, Jones. Fullback, Reggie Gilliam, only one. Wide receivers, I had them keeping six, which is Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis, Isaiah McKenzie, Isaiah Hodgins. I then have them keeping a tight end, Dawson Knox, Jacob Hollister, Tommy Sweeney. Just three. O-line, O-line, I have them keeping eight. Dawkins, Cody Ford, Mitch Morse, Feliciano, Darrell Williams, Ryan Bates, Spencer Brown, and Ike Bucker. DNs, I have them keeping six. Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison, AJ Epinesa, Gregory Rousseau, Carlos Boogie Basham, and F.A. Obata. D-Tackle, I have them keeping Oliver, Starr, Harry, and Harris, and, and Vernon Butler. Linebackers, I have them keeping Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, A.J. Klein, Tyrell Adams, Tyler Matikiewicz, and Dodson. So that's four DNs, or excuse me, six DNs, four D-Tackles, six linebackers. Quarterback, I have them keeping six. Trey White, Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, Saron Neal, Ter- uh, Taron Johnson, Rashad Wild Goose. I've been keeping four safeties, Poyer, Hyde, Hamlin, Jaquan Johnson, and then there's three special teams players. So that's why I have it. Going into training camp, that's my early 53-man roster projection. Maybe I'll look back at this at the end of training camp, see where I went wrong, see if I want to change it. We'll see, but that's what I have. I feel pretty comfortable with that. My only area I'm still not sure about is Tommy Doyle versus F.A. Abada. And I think that's kind of what it's going to come down to when it comes to final cuts, especially if both guys play well, it's going to be a tough decision. It, it really will be, but, uh, but yeah, so that's going to be on my Twitter. So let me know what you guys think. I, I'm really curious to see, you know, uh, do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? Am I crazy? Am I genius? Should I be the general manager? Should I never talk about football ever again? Uh, tell me what you think, because I'm really fascinated. Uh, if my 53 minute roster projection was uh, fire, was it good or was it complete garbage? Let me know. So that about does it for this episode of the 585 Report. Uh, Thank you guys so much for your support and for listening. And things are only going to get better now that training camp's coming up. Lots to talk about. Lots of good stuff coming. I'll keep you updated about next episode because there might be something exciting happening. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, But for that being said, I'm Mitchell Broder. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day.